And I'm sure that you've all used Google um, Maps and probably have used Google Street View to, you know, to find where a store is or a residence or something like that. So what I really like doing is utilizing Google Street View to see if the buildings where your ancestors lived are still present. So you can see the first photograph here. This is from the 1930s. This is 42 West 21st Street in Jacksonville, Florida. And this is one of my wife's ancestors. And he's standing in front of his car in front of his house. Well, I can look at Google Street View. And in 2016, that house was still standing there. You can still see, you know, the the features of that house, the architectural features are still present uh, in this in this 2016 house. So, you know, it's interesting to see, are the places still there? I do this a lot with, you know, people that I'm helping to do research. We'll pull up a census record and it'll have an address on that census record. And I'll be like, well, let's go and see the street view and see if that place is still there. You know, maybe it's an uh, apartment complex in New York City and it's still there. Or maybe it's just a house in a small town, and you can see if that house is still there. There's another site called whatwasthere.com, and this allows you to take those photographs that you have and actually overlay them on the street views for Google Earth or Google Maps. And you can twist and, and warp those photographs so they fit over the features you're looking at. So you can see here, this is that same house from the 1930 photograph, except the car is not in front of it. And you can see the neighbor's house right to the left of it. Um, an identifying feature is the chimney on this house. And then in the lower picture, I have faded the picture out. You can still see the overlay of the photograph. Um, but now you can see the actual street view from Google Earth or Google Maps. And you can see the house behind it. You can see the chimney. And then you can see the neighboring house with its chimney here. And you saw the chimney in the first photograph um, from the historic photo. So it's an interesting way to compare what, you know, what was there previously with what's there today. And the great thing about what was there is you can zoom into any location that you're interested in. So in this case here, this is Jacksonville, Florida. And you can see all of the orange pins show different areas where photographs have been added to the map. Downtown Jacksonville has 79 photos. Uh, a little further south of that was eight. A little further north of that was seven. So you can see the numbers that are in these pins telling you how many photos are there. And you can also see the inlays of the photos. There's 134 photos nearby. And you can sort through those photos and see the street view of those photos. So here's an example I've zoomed in. And this is an example of one of the parks there known as Confederate Park. And um, you can view the photo details or you can view the street view with the overlay of that photo. And this photo was taken in 1933. So these are um, some photos that I added into the street view there because of a project I was doing about the history of the parks in Jacksonville for a class I was teaching. And I was taking all of these postcards that were, you know, done of these parks and adding these postcards in over the street view images. There's another similar site called historypin.org. And historypin allows you to find your location and then upload your photographs for that location. So in this case here, the three photos I have up top are the sawmill for August Wise. And August Wise was my great grandfather. This sawmill was built in 1890, and it was burned down. Um, it caught fire and, and burned. So I've got the newspaper article about the, uh, the mill being burnt. I've got the pictures of August. Um, he's the third from the left with two of his children, and then some of, his co some of the workers in the mill, and most of those are his cousins or his in-laws. And then a picture of the sawmill, you know, showing the lumber. And if you look in the middle of the map, you'll see a green number two. That green number two is for Fort Laramie, Ohio, and that shows the number of photographs that were uploaded. Um, at that time, there were two photographs, and now there's several more that have been added uh, into that. There's a page called TopoTech, which is basically the same thing as the history pin. And it provides geolocated photos in Central Europe. 
So it started out in Austria and it's moved out from Austria. Um, but when you go in and you can zoom in on the satellite image, it's a Google satellite image again of, of a location. You can type in the town that your ancestors came from, uh, if they were from Central Europe. And then you can see these historic photographs for that town. Um, in this case here, the town was Bad Sauerbrunn. Um, and you can see there are 431 photographs um, from that area. And you can click on the individual photographs and it gives you the photograph and it shows you um, the location and direction that photograph would have been taken from on Google Earth. And then it gives you a description of those photos. So again, this started out in Austria, but it's expanding um, pretty rapidly into other countries in Europe. So you can also create your own maps in Google Earth and Google Maps. You only have to know how to use Google Sheets, the spreadsheet formula there, and then how to import that information in. And I'll show a couple demonstration maps and how you can do this. So in this case here, I've created a spreadsheet um, for the town of Minster, Ohio from the 1940 census. And you can see the first column is the street address. So the 1940 census gives you a street address of all of the households. So I've got the street address. The next column is the town, Minster, Ohio. And then I've got the head of household, the page number of the census, the line number of the census. And then I've got the family search link. And that family search link brings me right to the image of the census. And then I have the family search PID. And that PID number goes right directly to the head of household uh, family page on uh, family search. So now I've got all of these individual families. Um, you can see here, these are pages 1A and 1B, just to give you an example. And you see all of the families here, the line numbers and all of the links um, to those pages. So in Google Maps, if you look, there's a little hamburger menu up in the search bar, little three horizontal lines. If you click on that, you get this link to your places. And your places is where you create your own maps. So if I click on the your places, I get a list of all the maps that I've created. And you can see if you click on the maps here, that'll give you this list. And then down at the bottom, you have a link for create maps. And that's what you're going to do is you're going to click that create maps. And then you have an import button. And when you import, you're going to be importing a layer. And that layer is directly coming from your spreadsheet. So you can do this in Google Sheets. You can do it in Excel. Um, as long as you can save the, the, the data in a table format like Google Sheets or Excel, you can import that data in. So I've imported in that data layer. And you can see I've zoomed in on part of South Main Street. And you can see these sort of olive colored um, pins with the houses. And you can see in the key, those are from page 1B of the census. And if you look, you can see the name of the, of the head of household. So the top one up here is Henry Dickman. The next one down below that is Janet Wagner and then Wilbur Lammers and so on. And you can see that these pins locate themselves pretty well right above the houses that are there today. So if I click on one of these pins, I then get some detail that I've put into that spreadsheet. So whatever you put into that spreadsheet is the detail that's going to come up when you click on those pins. So you can see here I've clicked on the Henry Hinker house, and it tells me this is 130 South Main Street, the Minster, Ohio, census page 1B, line 50, and then the link to the census record and the link to his PID page on Family Search. And I can click on those links and then go directly into those records. Now you can do something even, you know, a little bit different than that. Um, you can do a migration pattern for your family. So in this case here, I'm showing the migration pattern for Cord and Reader, one of my wife's ancestors. He was born in 18, 1829 in Montgomery County, Ohio. And you can see in the spreadsheet in October of 1852, he was in Oregon. Well, in February of 1852, he was in Louisa County, Iowa. You know, so what I'm showing here is that the dates 
can be years, days, months, you know, whatever format you want them to be in or whatever is available on the sense on the records you're using. The location can be counties, it can be cities, it can be latitude and longitude, anything that gives you a, a physical location that the map can identify. The next column in is a record type. So a birth record, a marriage record, a post office notification. You know, back in the 1800s, they would notify you by the newspaper that you have a letter in the post office. So the newspaper would list, you know, so-and-so of, you know, court and reader of Oregon City. Um, you have a, a, you know, a letter in the post office. Come pick it up. Um, you can see I have a state census in there, a U.S. census, a county land claim, and so on. And then over here, I've got links to some of those documents. So I've imported that data in just as I did with the other data. I went in, hit the three little um, hamburger menu. I went to my places. I created a map. I imported the data. And then I told it to track, um, you know, by um, um, chronological order. And so it tracks the data and it follows the street path, the road path to connect up all of these in chronological order. And when I click on any of these, the information I have in the spreadsheet will pop up. You'll see also a black line, and that black line is the, you know, flight line to those areas. So it's the direct path, not the, not the highway path to those locations. Family Search does something very similar to that. If you go to the timeline for your person, it gives all of these different events in their life. And if you turn on the map, it then plots all of those events on the map. And then down in the corner of the map, it shows show route or hide route. In this case here, um, I've clicked show route, and it then connects all of these routes in chronological order um, on the map. So it's basically the same thing I just did in Google Maps. Google, our um, family search will do it also. You will just will not get you know, street addresses or anything that detailed. It's mainly, you know, the census record comes from this county or this township in this county or this town in that county sort of thing. So Google Earth does something very similar. The difference between Google Earth and Google Maps is that Google Maps is on the web. So it's a web-based mapping tool that you use whenever you're asking Google for directions. Google Earth is a downloadable program from Google. And it provides some other functionality that Google Maps doesn't do. So again, I've created a, an Excel spreadsheet or a, a um, um, Google Sheet. I then go into File, and I click on Import. And when I click on Import, it asks me what file I want to import. So here is my 1940 census sheet. And I'm going to open that and, and add that to my record. And now you can see in the box over here underneath the search, you can see under my places, I have Auglaise 1860, I have Minster 1940 census, and so the Minster 1940 census data is right here in my tree. I can turn it on or turn it off. Notice I have it clicked on, so I see all of these pins located here for the sites that I've um, added. And I can click on those pins, and then I get some information up above. And this is the information from the census record. Um, again, the person's name, the street address, the census page, the line number, the link to the census, and the link to the PID for the person on Family Search. So I can do this for everybody in my neighborhood, you know, that I'm researching. And I can go back and forth and, you know, see who lived next door, who lived across the street, who lived, you know, two houses down. Or I can even go in and see all the names of the people and, and click on certain names to show where they were in relationship to the house that I'm researching. So, you know, say um, his, you know, future wife lived in the same town. Well, I can turn on her, the wife's um, information and show where that was in relationship to where he lived, sort of, a, sort of thing. The other interesting thing about Google Earth, the useful thing is that you can import your own maps. So as I was mentioning with David Rumsey's maps, they're all georectified. He's taking those digital copies of those paper maps, overlaid them over Google Earth in the satellite imagery, and then modified them to fit over 
the existing structures, the existing landmarks. So here I've imported in a plot map, okay? And this is from Ogles County, Ohio, same county I've been working with the whole time. You see the pink area down here. This is part of the town of Minster. But you can see underneath the map, you see this the Rushi and Houston and Sydney, Fort Laramie. Minster is way up in the middle of the map. You see all these little, little, little towns. So the map is imported in very large. I have to shrink this. So you can see on this map, there are some green corners. There's some top bars and bottom bars. There's crosshairs in the middle. All of these give me the ability to drag and drop. So I can drag this crosshair and move the map over, you know, to a different direction. I can squish it by pulling the top or the bottom up and down and sort of compress it. I can do the same thing with the left and right sides. Or I can take the corners and I can pull the corners in. And that's going to allow me to shrink it so that it actually fits over the small town of Minster on this map. So basically what I've done is I've imported the map. Uh, I tell it where the map is located on my computer. I set the transparency for it. I can add web images. If it's a, a map on the Internet, I can add that in there and move it in. I've even done things like taking the, um, the weather forecast. So, you know, the radar images, and I can import those in because I, I can steal the um, uh, web address for the radar image on a, on a weather center's map, and I can pull it in and put it here, and it'll be animated and show me the weather anytime I look at it. So you can do a lot of things with these maps. Um, so I've compressed the map. I fit the, the land boundaries over top of the existing land markers. I, ha I have the roads over top of the existing roads. And so I've got it pretty close. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. And then what I've done is I've imported in the information for each of the landowners on a certain location. So my, my interest here is in Jay Stevie. This is Joseph Stevie. This is one of my ancestors. So what I did here is I took the information. I click on the box. I add information to it. I've added a photograph. I've copied the transcription or the indexed record from Family Search. So all of this information is the information I would see on Family Search if I click, clicked on the um, index information. You can see down below it gives me the link to the uh, indexed record. Um, so, you know, I can do this. I can keep adding information to all these landowners um, so you can see, you know, what was going on in 1860. So this is the 1860 census overlaying the um, plot maps for that time period.